When you think high performance gaming, you generally probably don't associate it with the words ultra. Well, maybe ultra, but not compact. In your head, you probably picture a giant full tower case with a gazillion fans, but no, that is a stereotype and stereotypes hurt us all. Record and stream at 1080p and 60fps with Avermedia's Extreme Cap U3. Now, ITX motherboards have been around for quite some time now, and cases like the BitPhoenix Prodigy make great ITX gaming rigs. But the Prodigy is actually still rather large. With the feet and handles included, it's often taller than some mid tower cases. The Silverstone RVZ01 is another close contender, but with an overall volume of 14 liters, it could still be a little bit too. Pudgy for your liking. Here we have the Rajantech Metis in a color that probably would not have been my personal first choice, but hey, what it lacks in size, it makes up for in stunning fabulousness. This tiny aluminum case measures just 275 millimeters deep, 190 millimeters wide, and 240 millimeters tall, and it occupies a mere 12.5 liters or 0.4 cubic feet for you Americans out there. On the front, you'll find only a power button. On the top, two USB 3 ports headphone and microphone jacks, and on the left side there are some holes for passive video card ventilation. On the right is a beautiful window over the core components, and since there's only one fan slot in the entire case, we swapped out the default one with a Noctua NFF12 for the best cooling while still maintaining reasonable noise levels. Powering everything, we have a 450 watt Silverstone SFX power supply, and you can actually fit a PSU up to 165 millimeters long in this case, but Anthony would not recommend it. He's got some pretty girly Asian hands, and even he had trouble cable managing and fitting things into the case as is. The beauty of this power supply is that it's almost half the size of a regular power supply, it's fully modular, and each cable is a lot shorter than a regular ATX power supply, so as you can see, it's pretty much the next best thing to custom cables for a tiny ITX build like this one. Now, normally when you build a computer, you put one component in at a time and then simply connect it all together at the end, ow. But with a small space like this, sometimes you're better off laying everything out outside the case and connecting everything together first. And then afterward, you move the entire unit as one into the case and install at the same time, which is fine if you have, you know, dainty girly Asian hands and then another pair of dainty girly Asian hands called your girlfriend to help you support all the components as you put them in there. Next, you'll notice this cute little CPU cooler that looks like a mini Noctua NHD15. In fact, it actually is. This is the Noctua D9L, which is a height of only 110 millimeters. It's got four heat pipes and a 92 millimeter fan in the middle with extra mounting hardware for one additional fan. With a maximum dissipation of 95 watts, it is the perfect match to cool our Core i7-4790K underneath with a TDP of just 88 watts. There's even a tiny bit of overclocking headroom, although the performance is good enough. I mean, CPU is not a bottleneck these days in gaming that we never really felt the need to. The motherboard in here is just a good old Gigabyte Z87N Wi-Fi. Why Z87, you might ask? Well, because we had one on hand and Anthony was too lazy to get a Z97 equivalent. It doesn't really make a difference anyway. There's 16 gigs of Kingston HyperX DDR3 memory and a Kingston HyperX 240 gig SSD in there as well. Finally, the most important part of a gaming system, the Gigabyte GTX 970, this one features a custom short PCB. You guys got a unit of this? I couldn't even get one. This is a freaking cool little card. Perfect for ITX builds, and thanks to the efficiency of NVIDIA's Maxwell architecture and the three heat pipe design of the cooler, heat isn't even a problem putting an enthusiast class graphics card into a system this size. So Anthony ran it through the usual tests and performance wise, well, it's exactly the same as any full-size system featuring a 4790K and GTX 970. He got a score of around 4,900 points in Fire Strike Extreme, an average FPS of 128 in Battlefield 4, and hopefully he's going to give you guys what settings he's using, and an average of 76 in Far Cry 4. I mean, seriously, it's the same as any other GTX 970. You can, like, click here or just Google GTX 970 benchmarks, and this system will be similar. It does not throttle and, in fact, still clocks higher than the stock 970 with GPU boost. 
So you're probably wondering about temperatures. Well, stay tuned for part two of this video coming up. Nah, I'm just kidding. Don't leave, don't, don't leave. This isn't Linus Tech Tips. This is NCIX Tech Tips, where videos are a single video, darn it. Except those times when I used to do multi-part videos on this channel. Don't worry too much about that. The maximum temperature we got on the CPU under Intel burn test was just 65 degrees, which is a lot better than a lot of full-size coolers out there. And the GTX 90 hit a maximum GPU boost clock of 1177 megahertz with everything at default. Maximum temperature, 61 degrees. And the fan was only at 47% or 1700 RPM, which is a very reasonable hum as opposed to a high pitched whine. I guess it just goes to show how far we've come with new technology. Newer processors and video cards might not always be much faster than their predecessors these days, but the advancements in efficiency and cooling, which are often invisible to the average consumer, are very evident here. We've seen ITX gaming systems that look good on paper, but in reality they just throttle instantly or crank up their fans to become incredibly loud. But that's not the case anymore, and we're finally at the point where we can have an ultra-compact gaming system that dissipates its heat efficiently while still offering great performance. So comment below if you'd rather go with an ultra compact ITX gaming system or if you prefer a larger mid tower or full tower for better expansion with respect to drives or other add-in cards. We'd love to hear from you. And like and subscribe for more videos just like this from NCIX.com.